Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Media True Nerd, and welcome to Medieval Kingdom Wars, a game that popped up on my radar because it is one of the ballsiest games I've ever flipping come across. You know Crusader Kings, and you know Total War, and you know Age of Empires, let's just make a game that's like a bit of all of them in one flipping go, despite the fact that the dev team is made up of three people. Three people decided that that was going to be what they were going to do. That is ludicrous levels of ambition. I admire that, so let's flip and dive in and give you the tour. So, first up we need to decide who to play as, and it all starts off a little bit Crusader Kings 2, because you're not actually playing as France or England or the Holy Roman Empire or anything. If you want to select France, you don't get to play as the king. Instead, you're playing as one of the dukes or the counts who actually works for him. Now, you can absolutely work your way up to being the king of France if you can defeat him in battle and you've got like the highest prestige or whatever of all of the nobles that work for him, then you get to be the new king. That's just flipping marvellous. But no, you start off in direct competition with all the other dukes where you're trying to curry favour, maybe wage a little bit of war against each other, expand your territory, all of that good stuff, and potentially, of course, getting pulled into the wars that may or may not be started by your king, which is a rather fun way of doing it. But as the period this game's set in is actually the 100 Years War, yeah, let's actually start off playing as England here, because I feel like that's got to be a bit of a hot spot for some exciting stuff happening. But the question is, which Duke or Count do I want to play as? You know, it doesn't help that no one's actually got the territory that they're named for because of all sorts of wacky family history. So yeah, Duke William of Devonshire doesn't appear to actually own Devonshire. That is instead held by, yeah, Duke Charles of Derby, who has Plymouth and Bridgewater, but doesn't control Derby. Derby instead, I believe, is controlled by Duke Richard of York, who does at least have the good sense to own York, so that's good at least. And you know what, speaking of Richard of York, I feel like that's what we're doing because, yeah, he's in a very nice position actually. He can head down south to help out with France if need be, but he's also got Scotland right there. So there might be some nice easy pickings as we're going to be at war with those guys at the beginning of the game too. Yeah, spot on. Let's make this happen. So welcome to the map and if there's one thing that's going to make me immediately fall in love with the game, it's a great big beautiful 3D map of Europe. And that's what we get here. It is quite nice. I especially like how the big cities that are on rivers, yeah, they've got like little bridges and bits either side and all of that business. And yeah, they're kind of built onto the side of rivers. That's very, very pretty indeed. So, it all starts off a little bit Crusader Kings 2, because at this exact moment in time, we're looking at a little zoomed out map of Europe, and the game is real time, but with pausing. But if I want to move units around the map, for example, so say, take my main army right here, and just tell him to like move over there, then get time ticking along. Yeah, he actually moves around the map in real time there. So that's a little bit more like Total War, I suppose, because yeah, there's an actual 3D model moving around. You're not just teleporting from region to region when a certain date occurs. Yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting little hybrid between all sorts of games I'm really, really fond of. Anyway, let's kick things off here. If I want to go and attack Scotland, I'm going to be needing a decent army. But first, I'm going to be needing a decent economy. You see, what we've got going on at the moment is buildings inside my cities are generating 30 silver per month. But they're costing me 278 silver per month. Fortunately, that doesn't include taxes for some reason, which you also have to manually collect. So, I can just tell myself to, there we go, some taxes, spot flipping on there, and that just gets me a bit more money. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why taxes aren't merged into income and you have to collect that, like, manually. I mean, I guess it does make sense, you need to, like, send around a tax collector to collect the tax, and that represents what you're doing there. Anyway, we've got some money up in the top left there, 2,707 silver, so we should probably spend some of that improving our cities, because right now, they're flipping empty. So if you look at York right now, it's literally got nothing but, yeah, one mana and a whole bunch of building slots in it. And here's where we get into problems with this game. Because this game is good, it's interesting, and it's ambitious, but it has issues. What I like about the issues this game has is they're not difficult issues to fix, but they are there. And the first one is the UI is not great here. So if I want to actually build something in these plots right now, yeah, to be honest, these all look a little bit indistinguishable, like that's apparently an iron mine, which is distinct from a barn, which is distinct from a stone mine, and okay, I'll give you archery, stable, siege, workshop, and barracks, that's all 100% fine, so a good starting point might be a barn, 
So I'm going to be spending 200 silver building a barn there, and as a result of building that, I will actually get 33 silver back every month. So within like, you know, six months or thereabouts, that's actually going to be making a profit. So that's a very good thing to potentially have built. Mines make even more money and pay for themselves incredibly quickly, but they also upset the population because no one likes actually working inside the mine. So yeah, population would be minus 10 happiness as a result of that iron mine. But, 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 but. Okay, that was a bad thing. Here's a flipping wonderful thing. So so uh, rather than just like, you know, selecting those in a menu, though I could do that, there's nothing to stop me just saying, yeah, build a couple of barns, a couple of mines, diddly diddly d. If I click enter city, then we all go a bit Rome total war here. You see, this here is York, exactly as York would appear on the battle map. So if York is ever actually attacked, then this is what I'm actually going to need to defend. So we've got ourselves, yeah, a little kind of outer area here. We've got the bridges that we can defend, the gates and the walls. This is exactly what it will actually look like if it ever does come under attack, which is absolutely flippy beautiful. And even better, aside from just being very, very useful indeed for figuring out what the city looks like and just having the Luxie around and planning its defense, it also means you can lay out buildings in a sensible fashion because every city in this game works a little bit like a, a castle or a citadel in Medieval 2 Total War, which is there are multiple layers of defences to it. The enemy has to crack through your first layer of defence, then they've got to make it over yet another bridge over here, and eventually they have to make it over to, here we go, your manor. So your mana is here, they've got no choice but to come over this bridge right at the end here, and then they've got, yeah, what's the next way they need to go? Okay, yeah, there's just various choke points dotted around, so you actually figure out where you want your buildings to be, because your buildings have an actual physical place on the map. What's the most important thing to you, because that's the thing you might want to keep right at the back inside the deepest citadel. So that might be your military buildings to make sure you can keep training units under all circumstances. A barn is not the most crucial building in the world, so I'm just going to slap a barn down over here, and now I know exactly where it's going to be on the battle map if this city were to be attacked. And come back out, and there is the barn. And yeah, there are diminishing returns with multiple buildings, so you can't just build 10 million barns. So there we are, everything's looking good so far, and this city is starting to move into profits. Okay, so I've just slapped down a barn in every single one of my cities. So now, even if I'm not collecting taxes, I'm actually making more money than I'm spending on all of my towns, which is flipping lovely. And another useful building I should probably just slap down everywhere, storehouses. Because once again, that's cheap, it generates money, it'll pay for itself in a matter of months, and it's also useful for economic upgrades. You may notice some of these here buildings are faded out, and that's because this game has a tech tree, we're going to need to unlock those guys. And it looks like this is actually going to be a requirement before we can actually do some techs. So go on then, all of you lads, have yourselves some nice basic buildings please. So Lincoln, that can also have itself a nice storehouse, in fact everyone can have one of them. This is possibly the worst screen by the way, this tech screen. So yeah, if you had to guess what you were researching at a glance, would you be able to know? Because I, I wouldn't, I'd have no flipping clue. And also there are three flipping screens of this. So yeah, that one at the beginning of Diplomacy. Take a guess what that actually is. Uh, a door, half open, with like a spade in it, and maybe like a wagon inside a room with a chandelier, something made of wood, and it's something to do with Diplomacy. I have no clue. Hang on, what's that supposed to be? That's supposed to be a storehouse! Watertight warehouse construction, therefore the storehouse building has slightly increased capacity. Great! You wouldn't know that at a glance. This, yeah... This screen could do with a bit of work because it's very unclear what you're actually researching. I don't know why all of them are like pictures like inside like, I don't know, boats? Coffins? Wooden silos? I'm not sure why they're drawn like this, like inside towers or something, I don't know. It doesn't strike me as a particularly good idea. So, what you actually need, by the way, is various bits of rare material to research something. So if I wanted to actually have myself a compass, so I could just move around the map a little bit more quickly compared to everyone else, I would need one brown thing, one possibly wax, and four books. Hang on, what's a brown thing? That's hides, okay, and that was wax, I was right. So, I've already actually got myself, uh, yeah, so two hides, two wax, and four books. So as a result of having everything I need there, I can just unlock that 
immediately and also open up the next thing along. So next would be a more advanced compass for making all of my ships move around more quickly because you can just hop on the ocean and sail where you feel like if you set off from a port. I don't think you need to actually build boats. I think it just happens automatically. It's kind of like Warhammer Total War in that regard. So if I want to just like buy 20 books, then I could just buy 20 books right now. But it's a bit on the expensive side, so we probably shouldn't worry about that, especially as I have no interest in going overseas just yet. The south of England can deal with the France situation, I'm more interested with Scotland. Ah, this'll do. If I start upgrading my towns, uh, then my towns pick up, yeah, these little upgrades underneath, so even more slightly unclear drawings. Like, this bird here means your palisade and stone defence towers are self-reliant, each with their own complement of archers. Because of a kestrel. Inside of wooden. Yeah, yeah, the UI could definitely do with a bit of work. But anyway, let's just actually buy... Oh, no, I don't need 20. I just need one, thanks. So that is... Oh, blimey, that's 180 a go. Oh, go on then. So buy that. Yeah, that's very expensive to do. Now I can upgrade my town, so my towns are much better at defending themselves. Lovely. But yeah, for the most part, you're probably not going to be wanting to buy this stuff. It's expensive. And let's just actually get one barracks down in York as well. And after that, time just needs to be allowed to tick along. Because I am at this point, yeah, making profit. Taxes will just come in over time. I do like the little season wheel, by the way. Showing you, hey, summer's slipping away, autumn's on its way, all of that good stuff. That's fun and pretty. I like that. And obviously, because I'm just actually a duke and I don't actually have, you know, magic satellite eyes, I don't know what's happening in the rest of the UK right now. If the king wants to tell me to do something, he could do, but for all I know, France could have just invaded into Dover by this point. I've no bloody idea. Still, we've now got ourselves a barracks over here in York, so that would mean during an actual siege in York, I could actually just start producing troops afresh during that battle, which is lovely. But in addition, my standing army can now actually recruit new units and uh, yeah new stuff has just started showing up here so english macemen are now available but a bunch of units are not available until i've actually invested in the right tech and built the right buildings so right now i can just have uh, yep yeah, some basic archers some basic workers some basic levies yeah just very very poor quality light infantry but now i've got billmen and macemen lovely so these billmen are hello your pikemen very good at dealing with cavalry and decent enough against infantry, and macemen, who are very, very good at infantry, weak against archers and cavalry. Fine, so that's how all of that fits together. And yeah, what's rather cute is, you're not just training economic units. In cities, and indeed in your armies too, you can actually, if you want to, train animals. Say over in York, right now, I could actually, yeah, there's two pigs already, so how about we just actually recruit a unit and spend a bit of money just training some pigs? Because once we've actually got the pig trained, it will just pay for itself. A bit on the slow side, because yeah, it's 81 and only generates 6 gold a turn. So that's going to take like over a year to pay for itself. So maybe not the best investment. But yeah, you can actually just buy more animals for your towns to make them just a little bit more profitable. Which I think is kind of cool. Also, every town does produce its own taxes, of course. This is all modelled properly. And if you want to, you can click on every individual town and collect the taxes yourself. Or you can use the collect tax button up here, but if you do that, you actually get charged a 15% your lazy tax for like clicking the collect all button, which I'm not 100% sure I agree with that to be honest, but okay, fine, whatever. Now, which of my towns is actually happy right now? Towton is 26 and declining, 14 and going up, 14 and going up. Fine, York is actually still the happiest right now, so York can actually have a second iron mine right there just for the sake of generating a little bit more money as time goes by. And in fact, actually, York, could you deal with more taxes? How would you mind, yes, 60% taxes? Uh-oh. No, never mind, that was just the changing of the season, because, yes, the map beautifully changes depending on the season, which I do rather approve of. Okay, at this point, we've got a decent enough economy. How's Edinburgh looking? Edinburgh is not looking particularly well guarded right now. Though it's close by to Glasgow, which is well guarded, so there might be a counterattack. It's probably time, as we've actually got a little bit of money in our hands right now, to put together a slightly better quality army and consider launching an assault. But if we're going to launch an assault, we should probably be prepared. In particular, York is going to be needing a siege workshop. That's pretty important right there. So get a siege workshop down, get an archery range down as well. Spot on. So let's actually get that in play. And now in this army, I can recruit some much better quality units. But 
they are expensive. So yeah, just a single unit of macemen is 15 silver a month to maintain. The basic unit, yeah, these are larches, are only 7, which is pretty good. They are cheap and efficient. But we're probably going to want some proper infantry before we march up to their walls. Because, of course, they can throw up a palisade. We're going to need to get past it. So we need better quality troops than them. Look to thy defenses, good sir. An enemy army approaches. Does it? Are we 100% sure about that? Because we're about to hit winter and I was planning to just, you know, save up some money and whatever. But, okay, I see no reason not to buy a handful of troops now. Let's actually, yeah, recruit some units because now... Oh yeah, now I've got English bowmen. They're like twice as expensive as the basic lads, but much, much better. And here we go, has a special whatever that is ability. Ah, it's the Scottish. Probably time for us to take literally everything we've got at this point and, uh, yeah, acquire some more troops. We've got plenty of archers. We've not got much in the way of actual infantry. Right, okay, we need to figure out what have you actually got. You've got some chickens. I don't know why I can't click on them, but the menu keeps disappearing the moment I do. Is it because... Do I actually need to... Yes, yeah, slow time right down to 0.4, but get it actually moving. Now can I actually click on you? There we go. You just can't while you pause. Or maybe you can, but it just... It goes away a bit more slowly. They're going to... They're going to Newcastle. They're flipping going to Newcastle. Go, go, go. Can we attack this army? Attack this army. Yep, target not found. Go, 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 go. They're probably about to attack my flipping settlement of Newcastle. And okay, fine. It's Newcastle, but you'd still rather not lose it. Okay. So... Slight issue. Slight, slight issue. <laughs> Which is, the Scottish have attacked me before I can attack them. That's fine. That's 100% fine. What have you guys got? Okay, they're just basic levy troops, but they have brought a handful of macemen. And now the game becomes an RTS. This here is the village of Newcastle, which is just, yeah, a bunch of buildings sitting around doing nothing. And we've got ourselves around here, yeah, a couple of armies drawn up on the far side of the battlefield. So they've got, yeah, a camp for one of their armies, and over here, a camp for a different one of their armies. So what we basically need to do is survive. Because when you're a defender, you just need to survive a certain amount of time. For a little basic village siege, it's 15 minutes. Now... Everything changes in this mode, which is you're using completely different currencies to what you were using before. Food, which you need to actually train more troops if you want to bring them onto the field. Wards to build wooden defences. Stone and iron for, yeah, other defences and also more troops as well. A resource cap in general and a population cap 7 out of 30 right now. So what I'm looking for is, where's the little kind of thing with all of like the, the things hanging out of it? There's a thing I'm looking for. Slight problem here, which is Newcastle is too small to be properly and easily defended. You see, in a proper city or in a military camp you'd set up, you could actually just set up a little wooden palisade. It's like a little thing you can click in the middle of your camp that lets you actually generate a little kind of wooden wall. Unfortunately, we don't have the infrastructure for that here. This is just a bunch of houses by the sea. Okay, in that case, all we need to do is heroic defense, go! We're going to need reinforcements, though. I've only got two levies and two archers here. So let's convert this building plot that previously had nothing in it. Because, yeah, there's the barn I built previously. There's the storehouse. But the empty building slots are still empty. So let's actually get ourselves... Yeah, some proper infantry might be able to do the job, actually. And that doesn't cost silver in this menu. It costs... Yeah, that actually costs stone, which is down here. And I don't have enough. We're going to get more stone by actually having a stone mine here. So, industry, build a stone mine. That requires 250 wood. Screw it. Get the flip on with it. And you guys, for the time being, my workers, the serfs, they basically just need to get on with uh, collecting wood. Just collect as much wood as you flipping can, lads. Get over there. Please get on with chopping down wood. Also, the chickens are officially units. So, if you click on them, they do actually show up here. <laughs> They do a little animation. They've got a health bar and everything. Okay, lads, you just spread yourselves out here. So you can kind of try and lay troops out like you would in Total War, but you can't properly stretch them, which is a bit on the difficult side. Can you guys actually do... Ah, the basic English levy uh, archers. They don't have any special abilities, so they can't, like, do flaming arrows or anything, which the proper English bowmen can. Okay, I see the advantage here. You guys just stay at the back here... Let's just hope they're going to take a while to flipping show up. 
How much to actually get an actual barracks was it? It was, oh, it's like 460. 490 for stables uh, and 300 wood and 100. Ooh, 300 wood and 150 for archery. Okay, we could get some of that going on. That's possible. I just need enough wood here. And if I need to, I can train more serfs from the manor, which is like my capital building. Together with, yeah, more English levies. Uh, actually, you're not terrible, but that would cost wood and meat. And if I need more meat, then I have to slaughter my animals. Still no sign of the enemy. They're presumably still building up their camp for the time being, which is good. Do I save up my wood to try and get an archery range down, or do I just try and spam basic levies? Uh, in the hope that's enough. You know what? I'm just going to get one basic archer out now. Because at the bare minimum, at least I physically can afford it. And it's more men on the field. I might stand a chance. And my serfs just keep gathering up wood. Because we do actually have, uh, yeah, more and more stone coming in. If I could just get that barracks down. And that was, hang on, how much was that? That was uh, uh, 460. You know what? It is going up. Maybe we can get this barracks down in time. I don't know. And, no, this is actually what units are like when they're still being trained. Nice touch. They actually pop up one at a time because they're being trained one at a time and armed one at a time. But they only pop into your colours, red on this occasion, when they're actually fully trained. Which is kind of cool. It would be nice to have unit cards, by the way. Because units can just die while you're not really looking at them and you have no way of actually knowing it. So, unit cards along the bottom so you can actually keep an eye on your units even if you don't have them selected. Would be very, very welcome indeed. Okay, we're down to 11 minutes till withdrawal. That unit is ready to go. Bring those guys over to here if you'd be so kind. Join up with your friends. And, uh-oh! Okay, uh, guys, 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 guys. Get on top of their troops right there. That is a Scots militia, but we have got plenty of flipping support coming on here. So their militia are already arriving. Right, uh, guys, actually, you know what? Do it further back just in case. Uh, where is a building slot we can... Oh, there's more coming in from that direction. That's no good. Right, you guys, get over here if you'd be so kind. We just need to deal with this as best we can. There's more troops coming in. You guys go and take care of that. Do I even have a building slot over here right now? I don't think I do. I think this might be my last building slot. In which case, uh, get a barracks down. Go, 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 go. And right now, my troops are being... Oh, they're just being shredded. They're just being... Sh oh, levies are just melting. No. No, 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 no. We've got no walls to defend ourselves. Right, uh, guys. Staggered withdrawal, please. Staggered withdrawal. Okay. You guys just fall back and spread out and just lay down fire... From a distance. If we just spread ourselves out a little bit, maybe we've got like half a chance. Uh, Mana, can you just get me... Yeah, just get me some more English levies, please. Just get me some more flipping English levies. How are my troops actually doing over here? The barracks are still being constructed. You guys fall back. They're actually coming in your direction. So you guys fall back. You guys fall back over here. And my archers just fall back over here and then just keep firing. Oh, that's a lot of troops. That's... Yeah, they've just walked straight into my town, actually. And tragically, the manor house has fallen, and with it, Newcastle. Okay, 1-0 to Scotland, but the war is not over yet. Right, every single solid unit over in York, get them in the army. Scotland is invading. Move everyone who is in any way decent over to the army. We are building one a hell of a force here. And the Scottish are actually willing to give battle. Good. Good, 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 good. So, I have got my very decent sized army right here. And also with the elite chicken regiment, which is very important. The Scottish, meanwhile, appear to be, uh, yeah, overwhelmingly very, very standard levy troops. I've got some proper professional troops in my army. And in addition, yeah, their decent troops just took some knocks in Newcastle and they haven't had time to heal up yet. Alright, it's time for some revenge. So, I start in my little camp here, and then over in the distance over there, they have also got a little camp. So, yeah, this is just a standard battle out in the field, but regardless, reinforcements can be trained. But, because this is in the middle of nowhere, no one's allowed to start with any buildings. There's just some building plots. So, uh, if I wanted to, I could absolutely get some more buildings trained in diddly diddly d. But probably, as I've got the superior army, my priority should be moving forward and trying to wipe out one of these forces as quickly as flipping possible.
Here we go. Giant pile of infantry, giant pile of archers behind them. That'll flipping do the job. Now, my serfs, meanwhile, while we're getting into position, you guys, yeah, get working on the wood. Though, once there's corpses on the field, they are allowed to actually do some corpse looting, which could be very, very useful indeed for accessing some more rare resources. Oh, in fact, we've actually found one of the Scots right here. So, some of you guys, uh, fall back, infantry, go and actually assault these guys right here. Because they have very conveniently decided to actually, yeah, get themselves nice and choked up here. You guys, however, move around the side and see if we can get round to their archers. So you lads, yeah, round here. And then we'll just basically squeeze them in. And then my archers have got a beautiful shot at the side of them right here. You guys, get over here. English macemen are a little bit vulnerable to archers, but should be able to take them out, and then they will be completely flipping surrounded. Spot on. All right, over here, the Scots are now surrounded and being just completely destroyed by arrows. I'm sending a small detachment of billmen and bowmen up towards one of the camps over here. Have they even built anything here yet? I don't think they've built anything at all. So uh, get in their camp. Let's just start tearing it down. In particular, the English bowmen. These guys have... Ah, flamed arrows, but we haven't actually upgraded it yet. That's fine. Let's just get over here and take out these guys. So one of those camps is already completely screwed. And what's left over here is being torn the hell apart very, very quickly indeed. One of my macemen is in trouble. Just get him over there on top of those archers before they cause more trouble. But yeah, I'm attacking one of their camps. They're not attacking mine right now. Everything seems to be absolutely fine to me. Let's just get over there, knock down one of their manors. That'll be one of their armies removed from the fights. And I think, yeah, manor number one has fallen. Which means I think we should be able to actually swing straight over to the other. They've overcommitted, trying to push back against the middle. I've just got so many flipping archers right now. There's nothing they can do. There's the last of the Scots fleeing over here. My archer line has just torn them apart. We've taken some bad knocks here, but screw it. It'll be absolutely fine. Let's just see what the state of the other camp is. We might just be able to move straight in. Those guys aren't yet done. I'm guessing they've actually built something... What even is that? Is that a retreating unit? I'm guessing that's a retreating unit, given it's not actually coloured in right now. And, yeah, looks like we can just walk straight up to the next manor as well. Beautiful. Another issue this game has that it does need to fix, and again, it's an easy fix, but it's a very significant one, which is, at a glance from above, it's very difficult to tell which unit is which. Like, you know, it should be very obvious at a glance who is the archer, who is the maceman, who is the levy. But yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. They're just kind of red blobs versus blue blobs. And there we go. We have managed to knock down the other mana. Battle is ours. And battles are a very good way of getting rare items you can use to upgrade tech, which is one of the big advantages of battles. So I've just picked up some nice holy items there. Now, in terms of healing up my units, I'm in friendly territory right now, so I can just pay for that. Which I will do, because I want my army ready to flip in March. We need revenge for Newcastle, which was, yes, very tragically burnt down recently. If you're going to flip and burn down Newcastle, I'm going to go and flip and burn down Edinburgh. Alright, eye for a flipping eye. And once we get close enough, we can just indicate, yeah, attack the nearest town... Which, is there a town? Are we officially close enough to attack Edinburgh? There we go. We're now officially close enough to attack Edinburgh. Edinburgh is guarded by a handful of serfs, two chickens, some wagons, some basic militia troops, four militia archers and a battering ram. And probably won't be coming with walls just like Newcastle didn't. So uh, pretty much we just want to rush them with infantry before they can get anything set up. Because they're pretty much entirely dependent on their archers for two thirds of their defence. Right, we should be coming into view of their units momentarily. They do actually have a mana and an archery range here. If I had flaming arrows, I could actually burn down their mana from a distance, but standard arrows won't do a thing. Right, looks to me like you guys are in a perfect position to actually draw up right here and start firing from this position straight away. So that's all absolutely fine. And you guys just basically start heading into the city from here. There we go. What are you even shooting at? Are you shooting at this windmill? Why are you shooting at this particular... No, it's not even that. It's the tree. Why are you shooting at the tree? 
Alright, so my macemen are coming up on their standard levies and should absolutely tear them apart. Ridiculous amounts of archer fire are coming in as well. These basic levies will not stand up to a thing. Meanwhile, my infantry have just made it straight over the bridge. Yeah, incredibly simple. And at this point, we can just concentrate our archer fire on their archers. And that's... That's a flipping lot of arrows. That's blocking out the sun territory right flipping there. Love it. And with every unit dead, Edinburgh falls to us. Flipping marvellous. And we get to choose what to do with it because they chose not to take Newcastle. Instead, they chose to burn it to the ground, probably carrying off a whole bunch of stuff. So let's see what our options are and how valuable Edinburgh might be to me in various different states. I can loot, raise and capture. And you plan to actually tell me what the... Ah, so looters take apart all the buildings. Ah, okay. So you're literally crippling the infrastructure locally and gives three times the trade goods and silver loot. Loot increases relative to the town level. Town is taken out of the game for a few months. Ah, so Newcastle right now I physically can't use for a few months. Gotcha. Raise it to the ground. I can literally remove Edinburgh from the game. Wow. Okay. And also that will give me a giant pile of money, which is interesting. Or take it over. Gather a little bit of trade, a little bit of silver. That upsets the population. Screw it. Edinburgh, welcome to England. So we're just going to be... Yes, there we go. The well-known English city of Edinburgh. Right, spot on. And you know what? Glasgow's right flipping there. And that actually belongs to... Oh, yeah, that belongs to the flipping king of Scotland. It's defended, mind. It's very defended, but... We technically have more troops, though some of them are levy troops. You know what? Let's give it a flipping go. Over to Glasgow. I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose this so flipping badly. But I'll give it a flipping go. Okay, so he's got his own billman as well, together with, oh, a lot of archers. That's a lot of flipping archers. You know what? I'm going to lose this, but that's fine, because this is just the hubris of Richard of York. But I'd like to show off a proper city fight, because... They are very, very cool indeed. Because the battle maps are flipping complicated. So, I'm starting down here in my camp, which does actually have, yeah, some proper little bridges in and out in case there's a counterattack. And because this is a big proper siege, for the first time, we've got the ability to actually build a palisade around our camp. Because attacking and counterattacking is very much a thing that could happen. So, yeah, starting from here. There's a little kind of, yeah, there's a little sub area over here. So not everything's in the same area. This area on the map here corresponds to this area. Where right now, I don't actually know whether there's any troops guarding it or not. I can't see them. But if I wanted to basically burn down any buildings that were set up in here, and I'm not sure whether I can see whether there are actually buildings there or not. I think there's just not buildings there yet. I could actually knock a couple of their buildings out of the game. Knocking those buildings out of the game would mean going forward because... This fight's going to potentially take a flipping while. They wouldn't have access to, say, stone mines, iron mines, barns. Whatever's being produced there, they would lose it. But let's say I want to actually take on the city proper. Yeah, there's only a certain number of ways in just because of the river. So there are a couple of different ways in. So, you know, I can loop round all the way over to here. And kind of, you know, there's a little kind of gate at the south here. But sooner or later, we'll actually just run into even more flipping bridges and so forth. So we've got one way in over here, which is, yeah, very well guarded by towers. Obviously, they can have archers up on the palisade and all of that business. So that's that spot right there. Or alternatively, is there another way uh, around the far side if we loop around here? No, that might be literally the only way in. <laughs> Bloody hell. So, yeah, there's literally one way we can go. And then after we've actually, yeah, cut through uh, that gate there. We've actually got, yeah, the main city over here. Then we've got to make our way through another gate. So they can fall back from palisade to palisade as time goes by. So they can just fall back to this palisade. And once this palisade starts getting into trouble, they've got one final area to try and hold out in, which is this bridge here that leads over to the manor. So there is no chance in hell I'm actually going to take this with these forces. <laughs> Because I am not good enough at this game. But I'm going to give it a go and see how many layers of defense I'm able to penetrate. Alright, let's kick things off here. Upgrades to be done. We need to get ourselves some defenses built here. 
So having immediately clicked on that, a palisade will actually start being built just to actually keep my little actual base safe to make sure there is no counterattack. Now I have a decent enough volume of uh, troops here. Are you guys jumping straight into... Uh, yeah, you guys are getting straight into chopping down trees. Good, 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 good. Right, let's see what I've actually got here to see if I can make an initial push straight away. So that's just a bunch of archers. Uh, start moving you guys forward. Are all of you infantry? Yes, you are. So you can be on control group one. Let's just start moving you in that direction. Alright, let's just have a little look, see what's going on in this little side region. See if we can maybe lock down some of that. We also have ourselves, yeah, some actual proper battering rams. So for the moment, I've only got what I've actually brought with me, which is these two battering rams and some ladders. But of course, there's nothing to stop me building more if I get a siege workshop down. Speaking of which, yeah, we've got wood coming in over here, bunch of building plots. Let's actually get ourselves... Uh, Hang on, we need... No, no, none of that just yet. I need uh, an iron mine. That's probably a good idea. And over here, I need to also have uh, a stone mine if I can. Can I afford that? Yes, I just can. So we've got wood, stone, and iron coming in as a starting point. Now, of course, the advantage of the defender is uh, those guys, any buildings they've already built in the town, they've already got. So they can start using them immediately. So that works very much to their advantage. So, uh, let's actually just send up the ram here, see if there's anything... Uh, okay, there's something going on here. No archers, though. Well, in that case, bring up my archers and start just peppering these guys with some fire. Why the flip not? There we go. Now we can just rain down archer fire on the walls, uh, and that's actually a couple of units being picked off immediately. I don't know whether they've got anything built here, but we can lock down this area just to make sure they don't. Right, infantry is being ordered into that little area. May as well clear these guys out. And as for the battering ram, which is kind of like... Yeah, it's just kind of autonomous. It's just kind of like a sentient battering ram. Oh, no, hang on. There are little people inside it. Okay, battering ram, you fall back, please. While my infantry just basically tries to storm the gate. So they're going to try and hold out in the actual choke point here. But we'll be able to just cut through them sooner or later. There's a lot of archer fire coming down. Now, while we're just storming that, let's check back on my camp here. So, yeah, now I've actually got a palisade on the edge of my camp, which is flipping lovely. And uh, there's potentially a counterattack going on here. Right, you guys, uh, get up right there. And my archers, uh, I need you guys uh, to fall back over here. So, they're actually coming out of the city to counterattack right now. Probably, they're going to try and relieve this area. So, in which case, what's the state of my melee infantry? There doesn't seem to be anyone else in here. Right, guys, uh, fall out of here, please. I need you guys to, uh, yeah, fall out of this area and start seeing what we can do. Oh, dear. Right, guys, 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 guys. Get them in here and have my archers open fire, please. You guys into position over there. And we've got ourselves, yeah, troops right here. You guys, I don't know, you guys stay up there. You guys can just stay up there and start firing off the walls because the walls will give you a bit of defense. Still, I feel like right now we've got more firepower coming down on them. So they've got a bunch of pikemen floating around here. Who have I got fighting right now? I've got some macemen, some billmen. The billmen are in trouble. This feels like a very significant part of the Scottish army. If we can clear these guys out, that's flipping working for me. Okay, at this point, I need to get some reinforcements going on here. So get an actual, uh, yeah, barracks going on. That'll... I don't have enough stone? Oh, bloody hell. Okay, that's unfortunate. I thought I would have plenty of stone by now. We've got one stone mine, but it's not enough yet. Uh, okay, I should be able to build uh, archery range. Get that working at least. The problem is plenty of my infantry is basic stuff here. Oh, my infantry is being shredded by the archers. At the bare minimum, I've still got one unit of English levies here. Levies should be able to go up against hunters without too much difficulty. But we've got completely bogged down before even getting into the city. And they've already got the infrastructure to train more troops. So by the time I'm able to punch for all of this, they're probably able to train more. Oh, bloody hell, the giant pile of corpses. The pile of corpses is ridiculous. Deploy the serfs, have them loot the bodies. Okay, we can actually get some more English bowmen out on the field. So let's just set the rally point up on the walls here. I need more flipping archers sooner rather than later. Just start... Okay, guys, why would you go this way? Why would my serfs have picked this direction to get to the corpse looting? You know what? It's fine. I think we've almost 
finally beaten back the Scottish counter-attack here. So they've thrown away a very large part of their army, but it was probably worth it for them, because... They've killed a lot of mine too, and I don't have the ability to train more right now. And we've finally got enough for our own barracks, so we can actually get some reinforcement infantry going on here. Right, what's the state of that gate right now? Because last time we saw that, it was flipping open. So, can we just actually get inside right now? Oh dear, there's... What even are those? That's... Oh, that's Scots Militia. Right, well, there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, you guys just get over here and just lay down some archer fire on those. Actually, don't, because they're, they're coming out. They're coming out to say hello. But I think everyone's dead at this point. So, pull my archers forward. We can at least take out these bastards. Okay, I'm determined to get at least one unit inside their walls. And I think this gate's open right now. So, I'm sending a half-strength, almost out of morale unit of bowmen in. And we have managed to make it inside. I got one unit inside Glasgow. That is the moral victory right flipping there. Can we actually get up on the walls, by the way? If you guys can get up on the walls, uh, not enough silver tub. Ah, you see, that's another unfortunate thing. Yeah, units cost money. So if the battle goes on too long, then your money runs out. So as a result of that... We did get one unit inside Glasgow, and we killed a lot of Scottish people, and Edinburgh does belong to us. So in many ways, we still win. But you know what, listen, gentlemen, I think you get the point. This here is Medieval Kingdom Wars, and it is ambitious. I just like it because of how flipping ambitious it is. It's got so many big, interesting ideas. This is the sort of project that should be taken on by a massive studio with hundreds of employees. And three people just decided, screw it, we're going to make our own Crusader Kings, Total War, Age of Empires sort of thing. And fine, it's got problems. Some of its systems are a bit unintuitive, and it's a little bit scruffy, and the UI needs work. But those are minor problems that it's very easy to fix over time. The actual fundamentals here, the idea of how the game all fits together, there's fun stuff here. This could definitely be worth looking at for the right person. I'm impressed with it. I think it's fun and interesting. It's not there yet. It's still definitely a work in progress and it does need more work. But there's notes all over this thing basically saying, hey, if you've got any ideas, join our Discord or whatever and tell us. So they're clearly very, very open suggestions. This is an evolving project. But for a tiny little three-man studio thing, it is hugely impressive. Hugely, hugely impressive. So uh, I'll keep an eye on this one. We may well see it again in the future if this actually shapes up nicely. We'll see about that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been the really rather impressive Medieval Kingdom Wars. Thank you very much and goodbye. This, this guy's enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear! And then oh, in come the chariots! Yeah.